Lots of people will tell you they've always had great taste in music. They'll say they latched onto Springsteen in first grade. They'll say they played Dylan for the kids at the pool. They'll say they spent their first chunk of allowance money on Kind of Blue. These people are liars. <laughs> kids listen to junk. It's the same impulse that makes them crave cotton candy. When our taste buds are young, all we want is a sweet rush that melts on the tongue and puts one thought in our mind again. Which brings me to a song called Chevy Van by a Charlotte boy named Sammy Johns. In the summer of 1975, to my 11-year-old mind, there were two great American record labels, Ktel and Ronco. <laughs> They crammed 20 hits onto a single LP and sold it for $4.98. A slab of vinyl can't hold as much as a CD, so every song had something edited out. The third verse, or the keyboard solo, or the long fade at the end. In almost every case, this made the song better. I'm imagining some guy at the Ronco splicing machine thinking, you know, the Beatles got in and out in two minutes and 15 seconds, and I'll be damned if Paul Anka's getting any more than that. <laughs> because of the sweet, glorious internet, I am now looking at the track listing for a record I bought the summer when I was 11. If I'm remembering right, it is the second LP I ever bought. It is a fine k production titled Music Express. Chevy Van is track nine, side one. The record leads off with Love Will Keep Us Together, the Captain Neil's mega hit, the best-selling record of the entire year. And because this is a personal essay, and you should be honest in personal essays, I will now tell you that back then, I belonged to the Captain and Neil fan club. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it could have been one of those lifetime memberships, so I might still be in. <laughs> Our, we members got a special 8x10 photo of the Captain and Neil with their bulldogs. If anyone in this room tells anyone else this, I will track you down and kill you. <laughs> we'll get to Chevy Van, I promise. But first, let me list some of the other tracks on Music Express by category. Songs I'd still like enough to have on my iPod today. Get Down Tonight. KC and the Sunshine Band. Songs that still sort of hold up. I'm Not in Love by 10CC. Jackie Blue by the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. The Rockford Files theme by Mike Buzz. <laughs> and Long Train Running by the Doobie Brothers. Songs I probably shouldn't like, but I still do. Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin. And Swearing to God by Frankie Valli. Songs I used to like, but it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> Love Will Keep Us Together by the Captain Antonio. <laughs> Philadelphia Freedom by Elton John. Mandy by Barry Manilow. <laughs> Poetry Man by Phoebe Snow. Sky High by Jigsaw, I heard that just the other day. And My Eyes Adored You, also by Frankie Valli. Apparently, Frankie Valli was sort of the favorite artist of the KTEL record label. Songs that even when I was age 11, sucked. <laughs> Run Joey Run by David Geddes. Get Dancing by Disco Tex and the Sexolettes. And Rocky by Austin Roberts. This is not the theme from Rocky. This is the one where some young man named, named Rocky gets married and his wife immediately within like two verses dies. <laughs> If you're around my age and you're realizing that this is a fair sampling of the music that you loved when you were 11, you might be wishing that when you were 10, somebody had pushed you down a well. <laughs> but as Woody Allen said in a totally different and really creepy context, the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> Which brings us back to Chevy Van. 
On YouTube, you can find a sad little video of Chevy Van. Video is not even the right word. The only image is a still photo of a Sammy Johns album cover. He is dressed in the full 70s singer-songwriter uniform. Longish hair, matching beard and mustache, wide collared shirt open two or three buttons down. Basically, opening act for Dan Fogelberg. <laughs> but the song on that one doesn't sound right. It's a remake he did somewhere along the way. Poke around a little more and you find another video. It's a shirtless guy in a ham's beer ball cap goofing around on a farm. It's your basic YouTube special made for 99 cents and some weed. But the background music is the original Chevy van. It starts to play and in my brain the drawer opens and the words of music come tumbling out. There's not much to it. A couple of layered guitars, some nice harmonies, a keyboard of some kind tugging at the chorus. But it all flows together as shallow and pretty as a trout stream. And Sammy reaches for the high notes as if he knew when he wrote it, this one's got a chance. Her mind wasn't I should stop right here and admit the best thing about this song when I was 11, Sammy got something. <laughs> right there in the Chevy van. My dad drove a Chevy van back then, mostly to haul around his tools, but I could imagine and did imagine giving a girl a ride and shortly thereafter, two minutes and 48 seconds thereafter, if the song was any indication of getting some of my own. Although I wasn't sure when I was 11 how to get some or how much I needed to be getting or even what some was. When I was 11, there was a lot I didn't know. One of the things I didn't know was how hard it is to write something that's simple and pure and sticks with people 35 years down the road. Like a picture she was laying there Moonlight dancing on the hand Woke up and took me by the hand Made love in my Chevy van And that's all right Chevy van sold more than a million copies and made it to number five on the pop charts. It was the only time Sammy Johns made the top 40. 20 years later, I was a music writer in Charlotte and Sammy Johns was trying to make a comeback. He came by the newspaper for an interview. He had written a few hits for country singers like Waylon Jennings and Conway Twitty, but he wanted another shot on his own. He knew he had a better chance of living in Nashville, but he had decided that he liked it better in Shelby. And that was the last I heard of him. As far as I know, he's still knocking around, and he may, be, may well be writing his giant comeback hit at this very moment. The chances are that his gift to the world at large is one song, a shade under three minutes long, that they played on the radio 30 years ago. I've been listening to Chevy Van over and over as I've been writing this, 10 or 12 times in a row, and I keep expecting to get sick of it the way most of us get sick of the music we used to love before we became mature and smart and cool. The way grown men and women lose the taste for cotton candy. But instead, I keep pressing play, keep clicking and listening and writing, and somewhere in all this, I turned 11 years old again. And Chevy Van is playing on my k album on my Sears Roebuck stereo and spun sugar tastes so good on my tongue. And that's all right with me. Steve, you wanna take it home? Like a picture she was in there. 